Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my first thoughts on The Pale Blue Eye, the new film by director Scott Cooper. It's also based on a book by the same name. In case you haven't heard of it yet, it's starring Christian Bale and Harry Melling. Harry Melling, who is playing Edgar Allan Poe, Christian Bale playing a detective who's trying to solve a murder mystery. So... I was very excited for this movie. I'm a big fan of Scott Cooper, have been for a while, despite his movies not always getting the best reaction from critics especially, but also fans as well. I mean, Antlers just came out last year, and I loved that movie. It made my top 10 movies of the year list, but it's got like a 5.9 and like a 53% or something like that. It's not received well at all. I also thought Hostels was amazing. I gave that movie like an 8 out of 10. I believe it was on that year's top 10 list as well and that movie also only has a 50 something percent i'm not sure exactly what but it, it wasn't received all that well either so this movie i was excited for regardless of possible bad reviews it might get i went into it excited and i left feeling meh about it honestly it is a netflix movie but it was showing in some select theaters um and it it really just left me feeling <sighs> empty at the end of it like i said it's a murder mystery movie so there's there's a lot of plot going on and you're not sure who done it and all this stuff and by the end of it when you finally find out you're kind of dissatisfied and then the plot also just keeps going after that leading to some more plot and some more ideas that are possibly an improvement on the story but also felt completely unnecessary. And speaking of unnecessary, I mentioned Harry Melling, who I'm a big fan of. I think he's a great actor. Uh, he was in a couple years ago, uh, The Devil All the Time. He was in it with Tom Holland, Bill Skarsgård, and uh, Robert Pattinson, and I said he stole the show. I thought he and, and Skarsgård were both amazing in that movie, but I thought Harry Melling, despite the big name of the other actors in the film, was actually the best actor in the film. I'm a big fan of him since that film, and uh, I was excited to see him in this movie alongside Christian Bale, who's, of course, one of the greatest actors of all time and certainly of this generation. And um, he was fine in it. Both of them were fine in it. I didn't think either of them delivered their best work. Um... It was kind of weird to hear, but Christian Bale was doing just a generic American accent, unlike in Hostels, where he was doing a bit of an actual, more authentic accent that was interesting to hear, and I was, you know, shocked by how good it was at the time. In this, it's just a more generic American accent. Everybody is, except for Harry Melling, who's playing Edgar Allan Poe, has sort of like an old Southern-style accent or something, which took me by surprise because it's Edgar Allan Poe, who's not somebody I ever would have thought of as sounding that way. Granted, I did look up his history, and despite him being born in Boston, he did spend a decent amount of time in Virginia. He was also in New York. He was also in England. He was all over the place. I thought he was from Baltimore. Apparently he wasn't. But regardless, I didn't fully understand the the approach that they had there. I don't know if that was the director's idea or Harry Melling's idea or whoever, but it just seemed like the wrong choice unless they were trying to make him stand out as he is the odd one out, like he's not from this area. Even so, felt unnecessary, didn't seem to add anything to it. Like I said, his performance wasn't bad, but it was certainly distracting with that accent work. Still thought he was a good actor. I still think he is, and I thought that, despite it not being his best work, he was still good in it. And same thing with Christian Bale. But anyway, what was pointless about it was the fact that he played Edgar Allan Poe. If he was playing any other character, like a fictional character, it wouldn't have changed anything at all unless I'm severely missing something here. I just, I don't see what him being Edgar Allan Poe added to the story at all. So basically what's going on is Christian Bale is playing this detective who used to be in the military, I believe, but now he's not. And so they, they trust him though and believe in him. So they bring him to West Point and say, hey, one of our privates, one of our cadets or whatever, 
was seemingly uh, committed suicide, but then something happened to his body after the fact, which we need you to figure out. And then he looks at the body and goes, it wasn't suicide, it was murder. And so he's trying to solve this mystery while a bunch of other stuff is happening. And one of the, the cadets there at, at West Point is Edgar Allan Poe, which is factual. He did go to West Point. He was there for a few years. And so, sure, he could have been there at that time. But beyond that... There's no reason for it to be Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm like, I'm watching it going, well, maybe there's going to be something to do with how the murders are done. Like The Raven. If you've seen The Raven with John Cusack, the, the fact that Edgar Allan Poe is in there makes sense. You know, it, it, it makes sense according to the plot because, like, the murders are taking place and according to his writings. And so the detective thinks it is him and he has to kind of clear his name while trying to solve the case and all this stuff this doesn't do that sorry spoiler it's not that this could have been any kid any outcast any because that's what the character is is he's like this kind of like sullen poetic gloomy romantic character that's in the military and hates his life and it's like that could have been a million people like it didn't have to be Edgar Allan Poe so why is it and that's kind of how I felt about a lot of stuff that happened in the plot is like okay, fine, but, like, why? <laughs> but why? I can't say the movie was bad. I don't think it was. I... It's one of those things where I was like, I wasn't mad that I saw it the first time. It's got a good cast. It, it kept me guessing. I didn't predict the ending, so there's that. You know, that's hard to do in mysteries nowadays. Usually they're, typically anyway, extremely predictable anymore. Um, but I just... I don't know. When it was all said and done, I was like, okay, sure, I guess... Why not? Um, fine. <laughs> fine. It's a shame when you come out of a movie and feel like you didn't see much of anything at all. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I, I can get into spoilers now in a second, but I, I just, yeah, there's not much else to be said about it. It's kind of just a nothing movie. Can't say it was bad, but I can't really say it was good either. So it's, it's kind of right down the middle unfortunately. So that's what I had to think. Spoiler free, I'm going to get into spoilers now, so if you want to stick around, please do, but if you don't want anything spoiled, please click away, go watch the movie, and come back, and then we can talk about it then. But if you're new here, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. So, spoilers. Um, the big twist at the end of this movie, and I'm getting right into it, so if you didn't click away, please do, <laughs> but no, the big twist at the end of this movie that's supposed to elevate this movie from being you know, a pointless who done it with some satanic shit is that it turns out we've been lied to this whole time and the people that get convicted as the murderers were doing some fucked up shit. They were doing sacrifices and stuff, but they weren't actually the ones murdering them. They were just taking the dead people and carving their chests open and taking out their hearts. So who was murdering these people well it was christian bale of course why you might ask because his daughter was raped by these cadets so he wants to murder them and so he does murder them and then um lucky him his murder gets completely forgotten about because of all this other crap going on and so it's like on paper that's interesting having the murderer trying to solve his own crimes but it's only interesting on paper. They don't execute it in an interesting way at all. And it just feels pointless. Like, we got the first ending, and I was like, okay, well, that kind of fell flat. And then we got a second ending, and I'm like, okay, cool, redemption. No, that one fell flat too. So you had a two for one, two for the price of one flat endings. And I was just like, oh, man, you got my hopes up for nothing there. Was it more interesting than the original ending? Sure. It saved the movie from being like, a four or a five to me and got like a very light six for me because hey at least it was clever hey at least it was something original at least a little bit but it, it i don't know it, it still wasn't good and like i said nothing had to do with edgar Allan poe like i was thinking for a while well maybe the twist here is that he's gonna he's gonna be the killer that would be interesting and then immediately after i think that then they start questioning if he is i'm like okay well it can't be that then. so uh, i don't know and then i would go oh it's probably his girlfriend because you saw her leaving the scene of the crime and we completely ignore that fact for the whole movie so i'm like it has to be she's involved 
now it turns out she wasn't the killer and Christian Bale was, but she was the one doing the sacrifices. So it's like that was predictable that she was involved. So the only thing that's not predictable is the fact that Christian Bale was killing everybody. And, I mean, that also then answers a lot of questions that if that wasn't the ending, you'd be like, so why this, why that? Because they're like, well, this person, th their chest was carved into by somebody less skilled than the first time. It's somebody different, obviously. So, like, there's, like, things in there. There's clues in there that could have possibly, I suppose, led you to get there on your own. I don't know that a first-time viewer would ever figure that out, but if you go back and watch it a second time, there are hints there. There are ways to get there, so I can't be mad at it. I just, after it was revealed, I just, I didn't care either. But I do give it props for being clever, because it, it was. I just, I didn't care. There was one line in there, though, where, like, I knew his daughter killed herself, because they wanted you to believe she ran away, but there was some wording there where Harry Melling, Edgar Allan Poe, was asking Christian Bale about her. And he said, where, where is she? And he goes, she ran away. Or I forget how the conversation goes exactly. But the end point is like, she ran away with somebody you knew? And he goes, in passing. And I was like, well, we know his wife died. So he ran a she ran away to be with her, to be dead. So she killed herself. So that part was clever, I thought. But, uh, yeah, overall, just kind of a nothing burger. Edgar Allan Poe had nothing to do with this. Why was it Edgar Allan Poe? It's like somebody just wrote a fan fiction about him. Uh, and it had nothing to do with anything. It was just like, somebody was a really big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. It's like, oh, I know he went to West Point. Nobody else knows that about him, so I'll write a book about it. And it's like, look at me, I'm the biggest Edgar Allan Poe fan. Like, it had nothing to do with anything. Like, at least the murders could have had, like, something to do with inspiring him in his poetry. No? Nothing? Okay. Sure. I guess. I don't know. It was a pointless movie. <laughs> so that's what I had to think. What do you guys think, though? Let me know in the comments below. And, of course, don't forget to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Why am I asking what you guys thought? None of you watched it. Why would you have?